When I was 23, living in the Midwest, far from my hometown, Thanksgiving was looming, and I couldn't afford the trip back home. But fate had a surprise for me. My boss offered me a gig house-sitting for his family while they were away for the holiday. It was a sweet deal, double pay for simply looking after their pets and home. I jumped at the chance. Arriving at the spacious house two days before Thanksgiving, I met Patches the cat and Oscar the dog. The first night was calm, but the next morning, Oscar's urgency woke me early. As I sipped coffee and munched on breakfast, I decided to take him for a walk, exploring the nearby nature park. Returning home, I started prepping a feast for myself. That's when things took a dark turn. A rattling at the front door startled me. Oscar's growls turned to frantic barking. Peeking around the corner, I saw a figure trying to force their way in. With trembling hands, I dialed 911, adrenaline surging as I realized the danger. As the intruder struggled with Oscar at the door, our eyes met, mine wide with fear, his bulging in surprise. It was a moment of reckoning, the calm before the storm. What would happen next? The aftermath of that harrowing night left me shaken but grateful. With the intruder scared off and the police taking charge, I spent the rest of the evening glued to the couch with Patches and Oscar, finding solace in movies until dawn broke. When I finally managed a few hours of sleep, I woke at noon to inform my boss of the ordeal. His decision to cut their vacation short and return home underscored the severity of the situation. The family arrived back early the next morning, bringing with them a sense of relief. As we resumed our routines, details about the intruder began to emerge. It turned out the culprit had a name. Brent, a former employee of my boss. He was let go due to his struggles with drug addiction. Knowing the family's absence during Thanksgiving, Brent seized the opportunity, but his past caught up with him. With the evidence stacked against him, he accepted a plea deal, returning home by Christmas. Reflecting on the incident, I harbored no ill will towards Brent. His actions were fueled by addiction, a battle many face. I could only hope he found the help he needed to overcome it. Since then, life has moved on. I've married, relocated, and gained wisdom from that experience. Looking back, I realize the importance of family and safety, urging caution to others, especially in today's world. As for my mom, her teenage years were a world away from my own ordeal. Growing up on a farm in rural Florida in the 1980s meant life was simpler, but not without its own challenges. With her father coaching the local high school football team and her and my aunt cheering on the sidelines, Friday nights were filled with community spirit. But beyond that, the isolation of the countryside was palpable neighbors miles away. They relied on each other for companionship and security. As my mom lay in bed, feeling unwell, the rest of the family headed to the football game. Alone on the property, she was engulfed by the eerie stillness of the night. Memories of the property's unsettling atmosphere flooded back to her, amplifying her sense of vulnerability. In those days, Without the convenience of cell phones, she had to trek to the kitchen to use the landline. The elongated cord allowed her to wander into neighboring rooms, each shadowy corner intensifying her unease. Her grandfather's shotgun, always within reach, served as a stark reminder of the isolation they faced. He had instilled in her and her aunt importance of only resorting to it in dire situations, a lesson she took to heart. Dialing her coach's number, 
my mom's voice trembled as she explained her absence. But as she spoke, a disturbance echoed from her grandparents' room. Frozen with fear, she strained to discern the source of the noise. With trembling hands, she pushed open the door, only to be met with a chilling sight. The window stood wide open, and a looming figure lurked within. One leg poised to enter the room. The phone slipped from her grasp, crashing to the floor as terror gripped her heart. What was unfolding before her eyes? As I walked away from the confrontation, the gravity of the situation sank in. Calling the police was the right move, but it also meant stirring up more trouble. The man's arrest shed light on his troubled history, a familiar face to law enforcement. But what struck me most was his motive, stalking his ex-girlfriend using her address as a guise for his vendetta. It was a sobering reminder of the dangers lurking in the shadows. Transitioning from the dangers of the night to the eerie encounter in broad daylight, I recall another chilling incident from my delivery days. Arriving at the designated business, I found myself alone in the dimly lit back area the silence broken only by the occasional sound of passing footsteps. Little did I know, I was not as alone as I thought. The sudden realization of an intruder hiding in my truck sent shivers down my spine. How had he managed to slip past my notice? The shock of his presence left me frozen, grappling with disbelief as he made his swift escape into the night. Reflecting on these encounters, I couldn't shake the feeling of vulnerability, the unsettling reminder of how quickly safety can be shattered. But amidst the fear, there's a sense of gratitude for escaping unscathed, a silent acknowledgement of the thin line between danger and fortune. Similarly, growing up in the hustle and bustle of my parents' Chinese restaurant, I learned the value of hard work and diligence from an early age, whether it was assisting with homework between customer orders or embarking on delivery runs as soon as I could ride a moped. Every task was an opportunity to contribute to the family business. Despite the demanding schedule, I found solace in the rhythm of restaurant life. The camaraderie forged through shared struggles it was more than just a job. It was a testament to the resilience of family bonds and the pursuit of a common goal amidst the chaos of urban living. The rhythm of restaurant life was familiar and comforting, with slow times offering a welcome reprieve for homework and solitude. Our apartment above the restaurant provided a convenient retreat during these quieter moments allowing me to focus on my studies undisturbed. Yet, one snowy Friday evening, the tranquility was shattered by the relentless onslaught of a winter storm. As the snow piled up outside, the prospect of bustling business dwindled, leaving me alone in the dimly lit dining room, immersed in my work. Lost in concentration, I was jolted from my reverie by the sound of footsteps entering the restaurant. A lone figure emerged from the snowy darkness, his presence unsettling. Instinctively, I hesitated, a sense of unease creeping over me. The stranger's demeanor only heightened my apprehension. His piercing gaze and twisted smile sent a chill down my spine, signaling danger. With each passing moment, my unease grew, fueled by the derogatory remarks he spewed with malicious intent. His hateful words, laced with venom, targeted not just me, but my family and our heritage. Fear gnawed at my insides as I grappled with how to respond. But as his tirade escalated, concern for my safety outweighed my paralysis. Summoning every ounce of courage, I rose from my seat, desperate to seek refuge upstairs. The staircase beckoned like a lifeline, 
leading me to where my father and brother might offer protection. It was a gamble, a race against time before the situation spiraled further out of control. The moment the man brandished a knife, fear gripped me like a vice, paralyzing me in my seat. It was a primal terror, the kind that renders you powerless, your mind racing as you grapple with the imminent threat before you. His taunts cut deeper than any blade, mocking not just my heritage, but also my very humanity, trapped in a suffocating silence. I felt the weight of his hatred pressing down on me, crushing my spirit with each vile word. But just when I thought all hope was lost, the shrill ring of the restaurant phone shattered the tension like a sledgehammer it was a lifeline, a beacon of salvation piercing through the darkness. As my family rushed downstairs, their presence infused me with a newfound sense of courage, with my brother wielding a metal bat like a modern day knight. The tables turned, and the assailant's bravado wavered. In a desperate bid to escape, the man fled into the night, leaving behind a trail of fear and uncertainty, but his cowardice paled in comparison to the strength and unity of my family, who stood as a formidable barrier against the darkness. From that day forward, we vowed never to let our guard down again. The restaurant became a fortress, guarded by the watchful eyes and unwavering resolve of two family members, armed with a weapon at all times. But amidst the fear and chaos, there was a glimmer of hope. Despite the trauma we endured, we emerged stronger and more resilient than ever before. And while the scars of that night may never fully heal, they serve as a reminder of our shared strength and unwavering determination to protect what matters most. As for my childhood spent in solitude, it was a testament to resilience and self-reliance. In those moments of solitude, I found solace in simple pleasures, like a warm bowl of Pacman pasta and the reassuring rhythm of my own heartbeat. Though the darkness may have loomed large, it was always outweighed by the light of family, whose love and support provided a beacon of hope in even the darkest of times. And through it all, we learned that even in the face of adversity, we are never truly alone as long as we have each other. And dependence, it was usually pretty easy to find common ground. We all understood the transient nature of our lives and friendships often formed quickly out of a shared sense of camaraderie. One particularly memorable move took us to a small town nestled in the mountains. It was a stark contrast to the bustling military bases we were accustomed to, but the tight-knit community welcomed us with open arms. From the moment we arrived, I knew this place would hold a special spot in my heart. Despite the challenges of adapting to a new environment, I found solace in the natural beauty that surrounded us. The towering peaks, lush forests, and crystal clear lakes became my playground, offering endless opportunities for adventure and exploration. But amidst the breathtaking scenery, there was a sense of tranquility that permeated the air, a feeling of peace and belonging that I had never experienced before. It was a place where time seemed to stand still, where the worries of the world faded away, replaced by a profound sense of serenity. As I roamed the winding trails and secret hideaways, I discovered a newfound sense of freedom, a liberation from the constraints of everyday life. Here, surrounded by the majesty of nature, I felt truly alive connected to something greater than myself. 
And in those fleeting moments of pure bliss, I realized that home wasn't just a place on a map. It was a feeling deep within my soul. It was the laughter of friends echoing through the mountains, the warmth of the sun on my skin, the gentle rustle of leaves in the breeze. Though my childhood was marked by constant change and upheaval, I found stability in the unyielding beauty of the natural world. It was a sanctuary, a refuge from the chaos of the world, where I could always find peace and solace amidst the ever-changing tides of life, rationalize it, attributing the sound to the old house's creaky floorboards, or maybe a loose pipe. But deep down, I knew there was something more sinister at play. I lay there frozen, paralyzed by fear, unsure of what to do next. Should I wake Kyle and tell him what was happening? Should I try to investigate on my own? Every option seemed equally terrifying. As the knocking persisted, growing louder and more insistent with each passing moment, I felt a wave of panic wash over me. My heart pounded in my chest, and a cold sweat broke out on my brow. I couldn't shake the feeling that someone or something was lurking just beneath the bed, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. Finally, I mustered the courage to slowly inch my hand toward the edge of the bed, my fingers trembling with fear. With a trembling hand, I reached down and felt for the floor beneath me, half expecting to encounter a cold, clammy hand reaching back. But to my relief and confusion, there was nothing there. The knocking continued unabated, but there was no sign of any intruder hiding in the darkness below. I considered waking Kyle again, but the thought of his groggy, half-asleep response filled me with dread. What if he dismissed it as a dream, or a figment of my imagination? What if he refused to believe me? In the end, I decided to confront the source of the noise myself, with a deep breath. I summoned every ounce of courage I had and slowly lowered myself to the floor, peering into the darkness beneath the bed. To my astonishment, there was nothing there. No intruder, no monster, no ghostly apparition, just an empty space filled with dust and shadows. Confused and shaken, I climbed back into bed still echoing in my ears. It wasn't until the first light of dawn filtered through the curtains that I finally drifted off to sleep, exhausted and unnerved by the inexplicable events of the night. To this day, I have no explanation for what happened that night. Was it a trick of the mind? A strange coincidence? Or something more sinister? I may never know for sure, but one thing's for certain. That night will forever haunt my dreams. A chilling reminder of the thin veil between the known and the unknown. The rational and the inexplicable. It's natural to try to rationalize unsettling experiences, especially when they defy logical explanation. In the light of day, surrounded by the comforting familiarity of my friend's house, it was tempting to dismiss the incident as a trick of the mind, a momentary lapse into the realm of the imagination. But as much as I tried to convince myself that it was all just a product of my overactive imagination, there was one undeniable truth that lingered in the back of my mind. I had heard a voice, a clear, distinct voice that seemed to emanate from beneath the bed. It was a chilling reminder that not everything could be explained away so easily. When I finally mustered the courage to share what had happened with Kyle, his 
nonchalant response only added to my confusion. To him, strange occurrences were just a part of life in his old house, a quirky anomaly to be shrugged off rather than feared. And so, despite my lingering unease, I followed Kyle's lead and tried to put the incident behind me. We continued to spend time together, forging a bond that would endure for years to come. Looking back on that night, I'm still not entirely sure what to make of it. Was it a ghost? A figment of my imagination? Or something else entirely? Perhaps I'll never know for sure. But one thing's for certain. The memory of that eerie voice echoing from beneath the bed will stay with me for a long time to come. A haunting reminder of the mysteries that lurk just beyond the edge of our understanding. Despite the lingering unease from that unsettling night, Kyle and I remained close friends, sharing countless adventures and forming memories that would last a lifetime. As we grew older, we navigated the tumultuous waters of adolescence together, supporting each other through the highs and lows of those formative years. Yet, even as time marched on, and the memory of that strange incident faded into the background, there was always a lingering sense of curiosity nagging at the back of my mind. What had truly happened that night? Was it simply a trick of the mind? Or was there something more inexplicable at play? Occasionally, I found myself drawn back to Kyle's old house each visit tinged with a sense of apprehension and wonder. I couldn't help but wonder if there were other secrets lurking within its walls, secrets that remained hidden, waiting to be discovered. But as the years passed and life carried us in different directions, the mysteries of that night gradually faded into the recesses of memory. Kyle and I drifted apart each of us forging our own paths in the world. Yet the bond we shared remained unbreakable, a testament to the enduring power of friendship. In the end, perhaps some questions are meant to remain unanswered, shrouded in the mists of uncertainty. And while the events of that night may forever remain a mystery, one thing remains abundantly clear. The strength of friendship and the resilience of the human spirit are capable of overcoming even the most inexplicable of obstacles. As I reflect on the twists and turns of life's journey, I am reminded of the profound impact that friendship has had on my life. From the harrowing encounters with the unknown to the simple joys of shared laughter, it is the bonds we form with others that illuminate our path and lend meaning to our existence. Though the mysteries of that fateful night may never be fully unraveled, I am grateful for the enduring friendship that emerged from its shadows. Through moments of uncertainty, and moments of triumph. Kyle stood by my side, a beacon of support and camaraderie. As I look towards the horizon, I am filled with a sense of gratitude for the experiences that have shaped me and the friendships that have sustained me. And though the road ahead may be fraught with challenges and uncertainties, I take solace in the knowledge that I do not walk alone, for in the tapestry of life, it is the threads of friendship that bind us together, weaving a story of resilience, courage, and love. And as we journey onward, let us cherish the moments we share, for it is in the embrace of friendship that we find true strength and belonging. So here's to friendship, to the memories we've made, and the adventures that await.
May we continue to walk hand in hand, navigating life's winding paths with courage, grace, and above all, the unwavering support of those we hold dear.